Have you ever wondered what a standard training day for a falconry business looks like? my coffee, the first thing I do is come up and make sure everybody's nice and bright eyed and ready for the day. Now I've done my daily checks and everybody's okay, it's time for food prep. My birds get a varied diet, they get chicken, beef, quail, rat, and if you're feeling fancy, some rabbit. But today on the menu is chicken in the form of day-old cockle chicks and beef as shin beef. Day-old cockle chicks are a byproduct of the egg industry. We can sex birds inside the egg, but it's quite a difficult procedure and so we can't yet do it on a commercial scale. So what happens in the egg industry is all of the eggs are incubated and hatched and once they have all hatched they're split between males and the females. The females are grown on because to become our egg layers and the males are killed at a day old. The bird is growing inside the egg. The yolk is not what turns into the bird. The yolk is its food source uh, for when it hatches. What they do is usually the day before the bird hatches it will draw that yolk into its abdomen and it just attaches to the end of the intestine. That means after hatching for the first day or so that's the bird's food source, which means because we get them at a day old, they still all have that yolk inside them. You can feed that yolk to the birds, but I choose not to. It's got a lot of cholesterol in it, so I choose to de-yolk all of my chicks. might have looked like a bit of a faff, but seriously, there is nothing worse than a bird biting into a chick and firing a line of yolk right in your face or in your mouth. Also, it then just runs all over your glove and you constantly have a filthy, sticky glove. It's just horrible. So de-yolk your chicks. You will thank me for it.
Hello, it's Dan from the future, from the editing room, my kitchen. Um, I thought I would quickly explain why I missed Wednesday and Thursday. You'll notice in the video uh, I'm putting all the weights down for Friday and Wednesday and Thursday I'm blank. It's because my mum had a birthday, so I spent a couple of days up in Yorkshire uh, and I had a friend come round uh, and feed and look after the birds whilst I was away uh, and they didn't wear them for me. Now, I didn't ask them to, I just wanted them feeding, so that is why there is a gap and that's why foreshadowing here a couple of the birds don't fully behave
because at this point I realised that Wilbur really didn't like the head mounted camera that I was wearing. I also don't like wearing it but I think it gets good footage. Uh, Wilbur is a very particular bird, um, I didn't think that he was going to like it uh, and I was right so I didn't film it but I pulled the camera off my head and I had to run off uh, and get the telemetry, he flew off a couple of fields over and I had to go and pick him up uh, so then I brought him back, tied his leash to my glove and I got him to jump from the perch uh, for a little piece of food. Um, he's a falcon. Uh, yeah, I'm currently just building. <laughs> no, it was fine. I wasn't saying anything. It was just a bit of footage of him eating. Um, I've got a YouTube channel because he's one of uh, eight birds. <laughs> yeah, him not at the moment. He's just eating off a glove at the moment because he's molting. Um, so every year around this sort of time of the year, they start to drop out their feathers and grow new ones through. So, you've just missed me. I've, uh, this morning I've flown the two owls, a kite and a hawk, because I fly all of them through the molt. But all my falcons, uh, they're just getting fed on the glove like this, whilst they're molting. Uh, yes, he is, but he's a hybrid. No, hang on. That's a bit of a big chunk. He can never eat the head. Um, <laughs> I have to help him with this. He's, yeah, he's two different types of peregrine. Are, are you really going to swallow all of that? Yeah, we have a gag. 
You're not going to manage it. I need, I need to help you. Oh, no, it's going. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so he's uh, a standard British peregrine. Um, peregrinus, peregrinus. Um, mixed with something called a, a red nape shaheen. And a red nape shaheen is sort of like a, an Indian subspecies of the peregrine. So that's a lovely piece of shin beef. As well as the birds, an important part of my day is taking my dogs out for a walk. If, if you've watched the channel before, you would have seen these dogs. I've got Delta, uh, Red Merle Border Collie, and Echo, Blue Merle Border Collie, and they're brother and sister. They're only about a year uh, and a few months old, but Border Collies, if you've ever owned one, you will know that they take a lot of walking. They're a breed that's been bred to running around a farm all day, so I can't just leave them in the house all day. I have to take them out here and let them run crazy. They've gone. All the way up there, gone. I'm very lucky with the fact that I've got all this beautiful woodland and fields around where I live. I have permission to fly all of my birds on the farm at the back of my house. But something that's happened recently is I went and I contacted the farmers who own all of this woodland that I walk the dogs around, and they are happy for me to use this area to fly my birds in. So the area that I can fly my birds in now is massive, a lot bigger. I more than doubled what I had before. So it should be quite exciting to get the hawks out and get them flying through some of these trees. One of the good things about training animals and understanding animal behaviours is that it's not just strictly for the birds. I use it on the dogs too. <whistles> I didn't film with all of the birds that I've done today, some of them I did off camera uh, and that's because some of them have their own videos uh, being filmed at the moment with their own things happening. Uh, also whilst some of them are molting it can get a little bit repetitive, me just sitting in a chair and feeding all of them. So if you keep tuned, subscribe, make sure you subscribe uh, and you will be able to see these other future videos that I am talking about. Also follow our Instagram because that's where I post most of my content. Uh, a picture every single day goes up on Instagram so if you want to see lots of pictures and keep uh, up with what all the birds are doing go over and follow our Instagram page. If you've been subscribed to the channel for a while now you might notice that I haven't uploaded a video in quite a few months and I thought I'll just take a minute to explain that. So here in the UK uh, we got hit with a massive case of the bird flu. Now we get bird flu periodically and often it's not something to really worry about. However this year it was the most dangerous strain, the most highly pathogenic strain, H5N8. And so on the 14th of December the government put all of the captive birds on a lockdown. Now there was an exemption for falconry, so falconers could still take their birds out and fly them but they couldn't tether them on the lawn to have a bath. I decided to not even fly my birds and the reason I did that is because there was a case of it quite close, dangerously close, scarily close to where I live. What happens if a bird gets bird flu is that the government will come, they will put down the bird flu and then they will put down all of my other birds even if they're healthy and haven't got it. They will then make me demolish all of my aviaries and rebuild them or I can't use them for two years and it happened to a guy quite close to where I live. So I really wanted to just be uh, better be safe than sorry. And so I put all of my birds in the lockdown, like the government said, from the 14th of December, 2020, all the way up to the 1st of April, 2021. Now, that's already quite a long time to have all of the birds having a break. As I come out and walk the dogs, I live uh, near some lakes uh, and waterfowl is one of the most um, prolific carriers of the bird flu. 
And what I really didn't want to do was to pick it up on myself whilst walking the dogs and then go in and pass it to my birds that way. So I've literally just been opening up their aviary doors and throwing food in for about three months. I got quite excited because the government announced that they would be uh, lifting the um, lockdown on the birds on the 1st of April. And so it got to the 1st of April, I thought, yes, great. And then the 2nd of April, another case. Another case that was 25 miles away. Now, typically, the radius of the danger zone for H5N8 is 10 miles. But when my entire business relies on, the, on my birds, um, I really didn't want to risk it. So even though it was 25 miles away, I put them all back into lockdown and still I couldn't do any flying with them. So it was sort of towards the uh, start of May, uh, a little bit into May, is when I actually started to get all the birds back out again. And so I haven't been able to do any filming up until this point. Uh, I've spent a, little, a few weeks um, just getting them all back into training um, and getting ready for shows and things. And I've been doing little bits of filming here and there, but this today is kind of the first video um, where I've really been able to actually get all the birds out um, and do some proper filming uh, with the idea of making a video. So, if you are a, a viewer of the channel, I do apologise, but there's not much I could do. The safety of my birds comes above anything. Good boy. Good girl. Just got back from my dog walk, and the game fair is fast approaching, so everybody is getting ready. Now there's a guy called Stephen who I have been um, training, ready to get his first hawk, and he has his own printing business. And he has made a sign for my good friend Charmaine with her art business. So one of the things I need to do today is take this new sign over to her, and she's got a lovely piece of artwork for me. So I've been home a while, uh, I didn't do much filming with Charmaine, we just had a good catch up, we took her dogs out for a little walk, uh, and I've been doing some editing, and I've got an exciting announcement, me and Charmaine are doing a giveaway. If you like artwork, uh, and if you like Peregrine Falcons, I'm yet to actually announce it on the channel, but I guess I'm announcing it now, uh, I got a new Peregrine, a female Peregrine. She's going to have her own video made about her because she's a bit of a, a special, unique bird really. Um, and Charmaine used her um, as one of her art subjects and she's drawn a beautiful picture. And Charmaine is happy to give a print away to one of my subscribers. So, if you would like to win this print, it's an A4 print, all you have to do is go over and follow my Instagram page, follow Charmaine's Instagram page, uh, and then leave a comment on the bottom of the vi this video uh, that you have done both of those. Uh, I'll leave the links uh, to both of our Instagram pages in the descriptions. If you don't have Instagram, then what are you playing at? Even my granddad has Instagram.